This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, how's there, ho there? It's Jeff Kidder Dobbin. Welcome to another sports catastrophe birthday boy. And I know this birthday boy on July the 26th is dead, but I needed to put his name out there. He was one of the greatest baseball relievers of all time. He played for the New York Giants, well, before they moved to San Francisco, St. Louis, Cleveland, Baltimore, the White Sox, California Angels, Atlanta, Cubs, and Dodgers between 1952 and 1972. He was elected to the Hall of Fame in 85. He is best known for his knuckleball, which gave him the longevity. He was mainly a reliever, but he did start some games. He won 124 games in relief. That's still the major league record to this day. The first pitcher to have 200 saves and 1,000 games. And he actually entered the major leagues when he was nearly 30 years old. That's amazing. So, he is Hoyt Wilhelm, born July 26, 1922. Some say it's 1923, but it's not there. He practiced with the knuckleball and would make his professional debut in Class D. But he went to the U.S. Army and participated in the Battle of the Bulge. He was wounded earning the Purple Heart. He would be Staff Sergeant. And actually had a piece of shrapnel lodged in his back. What? Still in his back. And he was still playing baseball. Just reading all that. He was released from the Army. And then he went back to Class D. And the Boston Braves decided to purchase Wilhelm. But November 1947, the minor league draft happened and the New York Giants took him. So he was called up in 1952 with the Giants. And he only recorded one out but gave up two walks. In his third game with the Giants, he actually batted for the first time, because pitchers can hit in the National League. Anyway, he he hit a home run over the short right field fence at the Polo Grounds. He would never hit another home run in his career. Well, um, was a good reliever and all that. He actually finished fourth in NL MVP voting that season, and it was 15 and three in his rookie campaign. Yeah, so amazing he was fourth in NL MVP voting because relief pitchers got a lot of appreciation. Well, I'm going to finish second in National League. But um, rookie of the year voting to Joe Black. He would make 69 relief appearances in 53, but his win loss record wasn't that good. Anyway. Wilhelm helped the Giants win the 1954 World Series by pitching 111 innings, finishing with 12 wins and a 2.1 ERA. That was the only time Wilhelm pitched in the in the postseason, the 54 World Series. He actually pitched two and a third innings in that in the World Series, earning a save in Game Three on their way to a four-game sweep. Wilhelm wasn't doing so well. He fumbled it. But the problem was that New York catcher Wes Westrom was declining in such a way. And he was the only one who could really catch. Where's knuckleball? So Wilhelm was traded by the Giants to St. Louis for Whitey Lockman, February 1957. He got 11 saves for the cards, but unfortunately he wasn't that well. St. Louis placed him on waivers, and Cleveland picked him up to use a couple times. He was made to be a starter for Cleveland. The problem was that none of the Indians catchers could handle Wilhelm's knuckleball. So that led GM Frank Lane to trade him to Baltimore, to put him on waivers, and Baltimore picked him up on waivers August 1958. And in September, he actually no hits the New York Yankees, one nothing at Baltimore's Memorial Stadium.
at his knife career start. He held two base runners on walks and struck out eight. Hank Bauer tried to break it up by doing the unwritten breaking an unwritten rule that you don't bunt for a hit when someone goes in for a no hitter. But if roll foul. It was the first time Baltimore had a no hitter well being in Baltimore. Unfortunately, Wilcom's knuckle ball helped the Orioles get 49 pass balls, which isn't good. All of that. However, during the 1960 season, and with an uh, American League ERA title in toll, Orioles manager Paul Richards told Wilhelm's catchers that, I, why do we have a larger mitt so that catchers could handle the knuckleball? Wilhelm did start 11 games and was 11 and 8 with 7 saves. He was an all-star reliever for Baltimore and it looked like Baltimore had their guy. Unfortunately, despite a 1.94 ERA, 15 saves, and an all-star season, the Orioles traded him to the White Sox for Luis Aparicio, which was blasphemy. I mean, you, the White, why would the White Sox get rid of Luis Aparicio? Anyway, well, um, made 21 saves and did his job. Well, um, finished with career highs in saves and games pitched in 1964 for the White Sox. His ERA decreased a lot. Well, um, did have a great 1967 season when the White Sox were chasing for that pennant, one of the greatest pennant chases of all time. They were short, but Wilhelm um, did have a 1-3-1 ERA with 12 saves. Well, um, in 1966, Wilhelm broke the record for most games pitched. The record of 906 was set by Cy Young, that Cy Young, yes. Wilhelm well, broke the record as a really pitcher, but he had consecutive errors, errorless games by a pitcher. Career victories in relief, games finished, and innings pitched in relief. White Sox didn't do so well. And Wilhelm well, actually mentored Wilbur Wood to use the knucklers and all that. And Wood, Wood pitched in 241 games in three years as a starter, mind you. There would be an expansion draft. Willem was actually left unprotected. And Kansas City picked him. So it would be good to go to Kansas City Royals. Unfortunately, during the offseason, he was traded by the Royals to the Angels for er Ed Kirkpatrick. Willem pitched for the 69 Angels 44 games and had 10 saves. And then in September of 69, he was traded to Atlanta for Mickey Rivers. He was pretty good with the Braves. The Cubs picked him up off waivers in September 1970, pitched three games, and then was traded back to the Braves for help read it. Anyway, the Braves would release him, though, and he signed with the Dodgers and all that. He pit, He started six games in AAA and did okay. He finished his career of pitching 16 games for the Dodgers in 72. So he pitched 1,070 games, which was a record. I think Jesse Orozco was that who broke it? I can't remember. But anyway, yeah. It was amazing what he could do. All that. Well, I'm finally got to the baseball of 1985 on his eighth time. There, so it was amazing. He and his wife lived in Sarasota, Florida, raised three children together, and Hoyt died of a heart failure at a nursing home in 2002. So he had a great legacy for throwing knucklers and all that. And the knuckleball is a great pitcher. Well, eight time All Star, Rosary's champion 54, two time ERA champion 52 and 59, and pitched a no hitter. Can you imagine a relief pitcher like that and he threw a no-hitter? Yep, it happened. It happened. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, he was basically a great legend going through 20 seasons and pitching till he was nearly 50 years old. 
What a guy. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.